Good evening again, everyone. Let's get right into this lesson. Uh, I am excited to be before you guys again tonight. Um, give me one minute. <laughs> I got my mind going in so many different places. It's crazy. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, okay. So I wanted to um, let you all know that March Magnify is coming up. And we have a lineup of preachers starting with the powerful, the prolific Elder Renee Holloway from Chicago, Illinois. Her picture will be up um, starting on tomorrow's and um, so you get to see her face. She will be presenting on the first Sunday. She's starting the thing off and I believe that there is a word from the Lord that will come forth out of her mouth with power. And so I want you to get excited. We also have um, one of our locals, the right Reverend Brian uh, Cahey, um, and he is going to be delivering on the third Sunday. Uh, I am uh, excited that he is a friend of mine and that he just loves the word. He loves uh, digging into the word. And so he may not hoop, he might hoop, you know, he can go both ways, you know, but whatever it is, I know that, that thank you. My son just looked at me like, don't say that. No, he goes one way, one way. <laughs> you got to be so careful about what you say. Scratch all of that. I hope you understood what I meant. He is an awesome teacher and preacher. So he may teach a little bit. He may preach whatever it is. I know you will be blessed. Is that better? Okay, thank you. Look, that's look, that's why we got to have people uh, uh, behind the scenes. That's why we have to have people holding us accountable. Because sometimes some come out and they be like, mm, what you mean he go? No, I didn't mean that. Cancel that. That's not what I meant. Don't take it that way. The devil is a lie. We snatched that up. <laughs> snatched that up uh, out of the atmosphere quick and in a hurry. All right. All right. Look, look, look. He cut that face at me real quick. He was like, oh, okay. Anyhow, we just want to thank God. Get ready. I just want to tell you, get ready. Get ready. We have some dynamic singers coming too. I know y'all get tired of hearing Pastor T's uh, raspy voice. That may or may not go here, <laughs> but we are excited about what's coming. I also want to uh, say hello to Claire tonight. She is out of the hospital. She is doing better, and I got a chance to talk with her on tonight, and she said I could share her testimony. Um, I'm not going to share everything because everything ain't your business. But what I will say uh, is that she is a dialysis uh, patient and there were some complications, but that has been straightened out. She's doing better. In fact, she's doing so well that uh, doctors are reducing some of her medications and uh, she's having good night's sleeps and all of that good stuff. And so we are believing God with and for her that God will continue to work his his uh his his miracles in her life and so thank you claire for sharing that with us on tonight and for allowing me to share what god is doing in your life all right uh was that everything nope that was not everything sunday is communion so if you need uh communion supplies um Look, if you want to do the cracker and the grape juice thing, you're more than welcome to do that. But if you are unable to do that and don't have supplies, you need to let us know. Should have been by close of business today. Uh, however, let us know and we will make sure we get those to you before Sunday so that you can join in with us for communion. We commune as a family. Amen. And a family that not just prays together, but fellowships together, stays together. Okay? I think that's it. Yep. 
That's it. All right, let's get into this lesson. As you know, uh, we are in the Knowledge is Power series. And the format that I have been using is a format I actually used when I was teaching uh, in the middle school a few years ago. Um, and that was, uh, it was called the KWHL chart. Um, and what it does is at the beginning of the school year, it gave me an idea of where the children were, what exactly their knowledge base was, and based on the curriculum I had to teach for their specific grade level, it gave me an idea of what I needed to cover, maybe recover, um, maybe present in a different way. And we went through this chart, the, the KWHL, basically what is it that you know, an assessment of what you know. and But we shifted it a little bit uh, and we said, what is it that God wants you to know? And in that, we said that God wanted you to know a lot of things. Well, you can go back into our, uh, um, our previous broadcast and take a look at that. I'm not going to rehash everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. But one of the things that he wanted us to know is that he was ever present. And we're going to cover a little bit on that tonight uh, because that is a prerequisite that you know he is omnipresent. He is ever present, which means there is nowhere that you can go that he is not. Okay, when you're doing good, he sees you, he's there. When you're doing bad, he sees you and he's there. I don't care if you hide in the closet under the bed, if you go to the highest peak of whatever mountain there is God is there if you find yourselves in caverns Luray caverns <laughs> you know underground uh, tunnels and things like that guess what God is there and that is something that we will build on tonight because that next category was the W what is it that I want to know and and basically what we came to understand is no matter really what the question is, that it falls into the five interrogatory categories, the who, what, when, where, and why, the who, what, when, where, and why. And so what we want to know a lot of times is why, why this happened, why me, uh, why didn't that happen to somebody else? You know, we wanted to know the why. And so what we said for the why uh, was to uh, to fulfill his plan of purpose, to prepare us, to perfect us, to protect us, to prosper us, to prune us. Uh, and there was one that I actually missed, and it is very important. Sometimes it's uh, because of a penalty. Yeah, penalties happen when what? We do something wrong, right? But even in the penalty, there is still purpose. Even in the discipline, there is still purpose, and God can turn it for our good. The second question we often have was the when. When is God going to show up, right? When am I going to find my boo? When am I going to win a million dollars? You know, <laughs> when will my body be healed? And what we said for that was that uh, God has an appointed time in the fullness of time, that there are seasons in our lives when he works and does and answers according to his plan. But what we can be assured of is that whenever it is, it's going to be at the appointed time. It's going to be at the appointed place with the appointed people. And we will have the appointed posture. In other words, we will be in a place of humility and submission to know that whatever God does, we will count it well. Amen. And so tonight we want to continue with that, uh, uh, not the why, not the when, but we want to talk about the where. We want to talk about the where. And as I stated before, uh, when we, what is it that God wanted us to know? We needed to know that he was ever present, right? So when we ask, where is God when I'm hurting? Where is God when all of these calamities and shootings and destruction and, and, and injustices are going on? Where is God when I can't sleep at night? Where is God 
when they are laying people off on Google and Amazon and all across the land and when when they're shutting down businesses where is God when my loved one is suffering in the hospital from some seemingly incurable disease where is God and so I want to answer that and I cannot give you um, I cannot give you specifics for your particular uh, where uh, because God works with each person differently but his word is the same and so I want to give you his word tonight of where he is so that you can take where he is and apply it to your particular situation if that makes sense okay so the first thing I need you to know when we ask where is God I want you to know that God is watching yeah not just some uh you know porch watching the ships sail in and watching them roll again way again uh passing time no God time does not uh, God is not confined by time he sets time and places in the moons and the suns in order but God is watching what is he doing is he just looking and seeing everything happen no I need you to know that he is watching with purpose he is watching over his word to bring it to pass so that his word is performed if God said if if he gave you a dream and said you will uh, be this or you will encounter this you will have this God is watching over his word to perform it so that it comes to pass why and we know that to be the case because we know that his word never returns what void that it always and I mean always accomplishes what it was sent forth to do he's watching just like a GPS or or like a a a, a, a child uh, a parent redirecting their child when they keep trying to get around them. I, I saw this cutest little girl today. I was at mom's uh, out in Waldorf and there was this, she was just joyous and jubilant and, and busy, you know, <laughs> she was just running all across the store. And I love the fact that the parent didn't, uh, you know, wasn't like, shut up be still you know she allowed the child freedom to roam so to speak but at times when she would have been in harm's way you saw the parent I don't know if it was the 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 grandmother or whatever but you saw her block the child and she was like boop 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 what she did was redirected her she didn't like come in front of her and like you so stupid you why are you doing that why are you running this way because the child didn't know she couldn't have been more than like maybe two or something um but she she blocked her and me being a parent me as an adult I understood what was happening but the little girl she just thought oh she's playing games with me and so what she do she run back the other way and the the lady would just kind of run behind her you know and when there was another uh, situation that would present itself you know that could have been dangerous she got in front of her and she boop, 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 you know and always her eyes never was off of the little girl but she still allowed her the freedom to live her best life and I tell you she was she was living it up she ran past me a couple of times uh and she just laughed and she (laughs) I don't you know she was having so much fun and I need you to know that God is doing the same thing he's watching you He's watching you. In fact, what 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 I say? This is Bible study, right? So can you can, let's let's turn over to Hebrews four and thirteen. Good evening, Minister Prince. Good evening, uh, 
Elder Denise, Sister Stephanie Denise Johnson. We got a celebrity out here tonight. This lady, she has been all over with the, uh, what's the name of the choir? Florida Mass Choir, not the Florida Mass Choir. Uh, whatever the choir it is, she is a celebrity, y'all. We feel so graced to be in her presence. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. But she can sing. She can sing. We're going to get her come back and sing for us when she ain't traveling the world and, you know doing what God has purposed and planned her to do. Um, but let's turn over to Hebrews 4 and 13. That's where I was going. <laughs> That's my thought. Boop. Thought went out that brain so quick. Hebrews, right? Somebody said this is the reason we know that uh, the men should always make coffee. <laughs> Because in Hebrew, I know that was corny. I know, I know. Just whatever. All right, Hebrews 4 and 13. My family is like, oh. So let me, let's go up just a little bit. Florida Fellowship Super Choir. Amen, 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 amen. Um. So let's go up just a little bit. Let's start at verse 9. Start at verse 9. It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That right there ought to have somebody shouting. Because somebody is in turmoil right now. Somebody been staying up all night. Somebody been about to lose their last mind. But I need you to know that God has ordained rest for you. Right? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let's keep going. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. I, I'm talking to some mothers today. Y'all know that sometimes it takes work to get a rest. But that rest is so worth it. Sometimes you have to, you know, hide in the bathroom, close the door, close the curtain, whatever you got to do. But it's work to get into the rest, but the rest is worth it. We got the same way. We got to labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example, excuse me, of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So guess what? He's watching your thoughts as well. He's watching the intentions of your heart. But here it is, just in case you didn't know, verse 13 says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. That That's a big word. That manifest means to be made known. Okay. There's neither any creature. That is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked. Whoop, and open. <laughs> unto the eyes of him. With whom we have to do. Let me read that. I got to read that again. I got to read that again. But I'm going to read it this time in the Living Bible. Do you mind if I do that? It says, he knows about everyone, everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from him to whom we must explain all that we have done. That's verse 13. What is he doing? He's watching. And and in one of y'all know y'all know I'm a big kid at heart. Pastor E just reminded me uh Monsters Inc. Remember the the lady uh who we thought was like the supervisor for the paperwork and going into the Monsters Inc. Some of y'all will catch this, some of y'all won't. But at the end, she says, we're always watching. Yeah, God is always, <laughs> he is always watching. He's watching you. He's watching over his word. 
What else is he watching? He's watching you while you sleep. Say what? Yes. Not like stalker crazy watching. Like, right? Not not stalker crazy watching. But he is watching you. Let's, you don't believe me? Come on, I got to show you. Psalms 121. Come on. Psalms 121. Let's go. I promise you, I need that reader that was in Chicago. What is the word of the Lord said? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. No. Uh, (laughs) He's watching. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. What? From whence shall come, whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. If he ain't sleep, what he doing? He watching. He taking a night watch. So that nothing is going to come up on you that God didn't see. He's like a, he, he's better than a trained soldier. He watches by night. He neither slumbers. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Hallelujah. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. Why? Because he's watching and he shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. What else? Come on in in this chapter preacher. The Lord shall preserve Preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is watching. Where is it? He's watching. He's watching. He see them trifling people. Does, does, <laughs> he see it. He see the justice that's being uh, subverted and, and the crookedness of the judges and the lawyers and and the prosecutors and the mayors and man this thing goes up the line he sees it he sees those predators that are trying to woo the small children away he sees it he sees the conversations of the people you think are friends and he keeps trying to divinely disconnect you because he sees what they're saying. He sees and he hears what they're saying and do it in private and then trying to smile in your face. He's watching. And that gives me comfort. It gives me comfort that he's watching. And because he's ever present, I never get out of his view. When I was younger and and I would go out, I didn't go out frequently. uh, But there was this thing that my mom sometimes would come out on the porch. And she would just kind of look around. And I had better be. (laughs) I had better be in eyes view. But she was only able to see based on what where her limit you know her limited vision she couldn't see through walls even though i I don't know about that some i I think i got some x-ray vision i think that's a gift that god gives mother sometimes x-ray vision see through see through walls and see through lies see through people you know i'm just saying you know but her vision was limited but when she couldn't see me god did when i thought i was hiding god saw me because he was watching. Look, look, look. I'm getting excited. It's 740. I got some more points to give you. What else is he doing, preacher? God is waiting. What? What's he waiting on? <laughs> what is he waiting? He don't see what's going on. Why is he waiting? Why is he waiting? I need you to know that God is not waiting because he is incapable he is not waiting because he is ignorant he is not waiting because he just wants to see you squirm he is waiting because remember what did i say he's not confined by time he orders time 
So what seems like him waiting or us seem like he's waiting, he's, he's work, he's, he's, he's in time. So he, it, it may seem like a long time for us, but it really isn't. You know, ask Mary and Martha when Lazarus died, they told Jesus in enough time he could have got there, but he waited. What in the world was he waiting on for his glory to be revealed? For his will to be done. So that when you see what's about to happen, you can't try and steal the credit. He's waiting. He, he He's concerned. That's why we had to know that up front. Remember what God wants you to know? He's concerned about what concerns you. He's a planner. He loves you. That's why we had to know that first. But right now, sometimes he's just waiting. He's waiting. Sometimes he's waiting for us to get tired of fighting. For us to get tired of being our own tour guide. He's waiting for us sometimes to come to the end of ourselves so that he can be manifested in our lives. He's waiting. Like a lifeguard. Somebody slapping water and kicking and screaming and going crazy. That lifeguard sees what's happening. They're, they're going to move in order to save that person. But they going to wait till they tie themselves out. As some of us, we're extending the wait time. <laughs> because we'd be like, Jesus, if you do this for me, I promise God I'll be good. And then we get up and we try and do it ourselves. And God is like, but okay. All right. I'll just, I'll just step back a little bit. Tell me how that's working for you. <laughs> You, you asked me for a husband and I told you that that wasn't a person, but you wanted to get into that relationship in here. How's that working? No, no, no. You, you can pray it, but, you know, I'm really not, you know, into all that. Yeah, I know he no good. I know what he did. I know he cheated. Yep. I know. I know he trying to get the goodies and the cookies. I know. I know. I know she a gold digger. I know. But I told you no, but you, you know, you did what you wanted to do. So I still got, I, I, I got so-and-so waiting for you, but I'm not going to let you mess him up or her up. I'll wait till you, you know, you go on and finish doing what you're doing. If <laughs> my grace continues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, we do, you, you do know that at any time God can say, you know what? I see that you have an unrepentant heart. And so I'm just going to turn you over to your own ways. I'm, I'm reprobate mine. Cause you, you ain't, you ain't got, I know your heart too. So I know you ain't got no intentions on really turning. Yeah. But some, some of us, he's just waiting for us to, to, to get finished. You finish? No, no. Okay. I, I told you I had an entrepreneurial business in you, but you keep trying to hustle these small things that may be good, but they're not God. I'm waiting. I'm waiting till you fully trust me. You say you trust me, but I told you what you needed to do almost, what, seven years ago, and you still ain't done that yet? I'm waiting. Why? Because there's an appointed time, an appointed place with the appointed people and the appointed posture. The question is, or should be asked, are you extending your wait time? Do you keep hanging up when <laughs> you put on hold and then have to go back in the queue behind everybody else that called? They going to get to you. Are you being, uh, <laughs> and I hate to say that, but are you being the belligerent person that is being intentionally ignored because you ain't learned how to talk or act? Yeah. Y'all do know that sometimes when y'all go in them restaurants and you be showing your behind and a waitress seem like, 
they come over, but you, you so just, yeah. Have you ever noticed that your wait time is extended? <laughs> they get, they getting the Jesus up in them so they don't cuss you out. Or some of the people in customer service at the, you know, they waiting. <laughs> Jesus, I'm going to need you right now. Help me lower. But he's waiting. He's watching. And he's waiting. Let me give you a little scripture. Second Peter 3 and 9. Second Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slow. To fulfill his promise. As some count slowness. But is patient towards you. Aren't Look. Aren't you so glad that God is patient towards us. Because if look. I prayed. I prayed this morning. God I'm so thankful that I'm not you. Because mankind and the world would really be in trouble. I'm not saying that I'm impatient. But. <laughs> I ain't exact. Let me. Y'all. I'm just saying. But it's patient towards you. And you. And you. And me. Not wishing that any should perish. But that all. Should come. Should reach. Should obtain. Repentance. He's watching. He's waiting. And what should we be doing? We should also be waiting. The Bible says wait on the Lord. But not wait as in time. That word means serve. Wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And guess what? He will strengthen. He's going to strengthen your heart. He's watching. He's waiting. But what else is he doing, preacher? Where is God? I'm so glad you asked. Where is God? God is at work. Yeah, some of us, especially during this pandemic, the question of where is dad, where is mom, we didn't have to ask that question because everybody was at home or at least should have been at home right well not not everybody essential workers were at their jobs and things like that but for the most of most of us we was at home right but once everything started working back up we 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 at work we at the clubs we at church some of us right we at the stove we we somewhere i want you to know that god is at work even while he's watching and he's waiting it's still considered work while he's watching you at night, that's work. While he's waiting patiently for you to get your stuff together, that's work. I know that's work. Because I hate waiting on people. It takes a whole lot of work <laughs> to wait on people. He's working. But what exactly is he working to do? I'm so glad you asked. Come on, I got scripture for you. Let's go. We're going to go on over to Psalm 32 and 8. Psalm 32. Part of his work is instruction. Teachers be working. And y'all find that out. <laughs> y'all found that out during the pandemic, right? Where y'all was hating on the teacher, talking about the teacher ain't doing enough and all that. Then you had to take care of your own little nappy head kids. And you found out that the teacher was working, that the teacher needed a raise, that they should have been, you know, you should have been laying gift cards and flowers at their feet, right? Because they was working, right? <laughs> Teaching them some of the stuff that you should have been teaching them. Anyhow, let me keep going. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. 
let me let me let me let me let me let me read that can i read that from the living bible verse 8 says i will instruct you says the lord and guide you along the best pathway for your life i will advise you and watch your progress that's work that's work because some of us we hire advisors we hire counselors we hire people to be our mentors and things like that and then we don't do nothing that they tell us to do they tell us, baby, I think right now you should pull back, um, especially because you're, you're not a high risk taker. So why don't you do some mutual funds or some soft investments? Da, da, da. No, I want to go big. I want to go for the for for the what was that thing that just dropped the cryptocurrency? I want I want to put everything. Was it Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Put everything because because my money going to be made large. Boosh. Uh, uh, God, can we can we can can we look at some mutual funds now? <laughs> and 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 let me say this: I am not making fun of anybody who experienced that tragedy. It's not funny. It really isn't. It's sad and it's angering. But the people of God, God was talking to some of y'all. But the greed of your own heart. The, the, well, everybody else is doing it, so why can't I came into play? Oh, well, this is new and exciting. And God was like, I don't know if you should do that. In fact, I do know. Don't do that. And he's advising you. He's God. God be working. Y'all be working on him, too. Working on his, <laughs> working on his nerves. Right? But he be working. He be trying trying to instruct you trying to tell you trying to guide you along the best pathway for your life right for your life your life ain't somebody else's life you can't go their pathway i sent them that way because that way was best for them but for you there's a calculated and 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 a specific strategic way i need you to go joseph come here for come, come here for a minute uh, yeah, I could have sent you the route of being in the king's court and, you know, you finagling and, and finessing with the royalty. But no, I needed to send you this way through the pit to the prison and then to the palace. Why? Because I needed you to be humbled. I needed you to not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. I needed you to learn how to forgive when people lie on you. I need you to go this way. But, 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 why I gotta go this way when they like an overnight sensation? Because I, my purpose and my plan for your life. He's working. Oh, so look, look, look. Let me, I gotta read verse 9 and then we're gonna move on. Verse 9, the Living Bible Translation, says this. And I didn't say it, the Bible did. It says, don't be like a senseless horse or mule <laughs> that has to have a bit in its mouth to keep it in line. Ooh wee. He just called some of y'all some, I can't repeat that. <laughs> Jesus many sorrows come to the wicked but abiding love surrounds those who trust in the Lord so rejoice in him all those who are his and shout for joy all those who try to obey him don't make God work so hard and while we at it not just God but those that have the rule over you he's working through your God-given leadership. I'm not just going to say your leadership because some of y'all got some trifling and, and some toxic bosses. But he's working through your God-given leadership. And some of y'all people make it hard for those who are watching for your souls. Because y'all hard-headed and stubborn. Don't make it hard for your mentor. 
Don't make it hard for your teacher. Don't make it hard for your parent. They working. They doing the best they can. God is working. Not just is he working for or or on, on our behalf, but he's working in us. Don't believe me? Come on. Let's go to the Bible. <clears throat> Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Hebrews 13, 21. Hebrews 13, 21. What does that say? Man, I really need somebody to be reading this. Uh huh. Read. Okay. <laughs> Those of y'all ain't from Chicago, y'all get that. But uh, he's working. Thirteen, chapter thirteen, verse twenty-one. What is he doing? He is make making you perfect in every good work. To do his will. Working in you. Working in you. Working in you. And some of y'all. Y'all kind of hard. So he got to get the jerk on you. He's working in you. (laughs) And when I say some of y'all. I'm talking about myself. Working in us. That which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He's working. 757. Got to go. He's working. What else is he doing? He's winning. I, I had on there warring, but he really isn't warring. It's already a fixed fight and he's already victorious, <laughs> but he's winning. God is winning. Right? It's already. It's already done. And not only is he winning or has won, but he's winning or allowing us to win as well. Win over sickness. Win over death. Win over destruction and evil he is winning in our lives to him that overcomes what has he given us he's given us crowns but you don't just get the crown for doing nothing you got to engage but here's the the devil don't he don't like it he don't even want to believe it but the truth of the matter is the battle is already won It's already won. And victory may not come the way you think it should come. Sometimes God uses unusual weapons of warfare. Think I'm lying. I need you to read your Bible, people. Who, how could you win and tear down thick several feet wide and thick walls just by shouting a praise. You don't even realize that that was significant. There are some walls, defensed walls around the promise of what God has given you. And he's just saying, I need you to walk around it and I need you to shout for the victory because you win. What? You win. I'm going to give you food so that you will not. It, it's going to be so much. It's going to blow your mind. Well, how are we going to get the food, God? Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get some, some, some pictures and some flashlights. What are you talking about, God? Get some pictures and some flashlights. What kind of pictures? Like frame pictures? No, like were the pictures y'all didn't hear about that battle where he told the people to get pictures 
like water pitchers and flashlights and God calls the invading army to hear footsteps like it was a mighty army and all they had was a water a Brita filter <laughs> and a flashlight and God gave them victory and when they came into the camp they look them people was so scared they was like we got to get up out of here now let's go they left everything they left jewels they left clothes they left food they left everything in point the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous come on they, they left it all they came in they was like wait a minute where's everybody God had provided their wildest dream winning God is winning. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Everything he speaks and has spoken and will speak, it has already come to pass. We just got to walk into the wind. Yeah, he's already set up the net. He's already set up the perfect shot. He's already trying to get you in position so that when you, it goes in. You just got to be obedient. We just got to be obedient. We got to do what he tells us to do. We got to go where he tells us to go. Say what he tells us to say. Speak and, and to act and to refrain from speaking. The, the, the walls around Jericho, they didn't just start shouting. He told them, shut up for a minute. I know y'all don't like that word. Shut up is such a bad word. He did. He told him, shut up. Shut up. Don't you say nothing. <laughs> and then when I tell you to scream, when I tell you to shout, when I tell you to give me an undignified praise, then you better go all out. You better go for broke, honey. But right now I need you. We got to do what he tells us to do. And we have to trust him. Why? Because he's winning. He's already won. He's waiting for us to walk into the wind. Sometimes that, that boss, I'm talking to somebody right now. That boss that is giving you the flux, it's already won. It's already won. You just need to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. It's victory shall be yours he's winning he's a winning guy he never loses nothing has he lost god don't even know how to lose <laughs> even when he gave his life some people say he lost his life he didn't lose it he laid it down why so he could still win Win us eternal salvation. Win us full access passes to the kingdom of heaven and to the kingdom of God. Win so that he had the keys of hell and death in him. He, look, it, it was a strategic move. He didn't lose. Boom, he won. The devil thought he had us. He thought he had us locked up, chained up. Couldn't go no, but God, he won the victory for us. So where's God? I'm so glad you asked. Where's he when it hurts? He's ever present. He's there. He's there. Sometimes we don't know he's there because our pain has obscured our eyes to his presence. But I want you to ask tonight, God, I know you're here, but I can't see you. I can't feel you. I can't hear you. Will you make yourself known to me tonight? God, you know I'm ready to give up. You know 
what's going on. You know the pain I feel in my body. You know the pain I feel in my heart. God, you know the pain, the agonizing pain that is going on right now because my baby was senselessly shot down. He, she was just trying to go to school and some crazy person went into their school and God, where are you? I want you to know that he's near. And I'm praying, even if you can't pray right now, God, even now, even as we conclude, God, we know that you're watching. We know that you're waiting. We know that you're working. And God, we know that the victory and the battle is already won. But God, we need to know and see and feel your presence to know that you're near. God, even now, before we end this broadcast, will you make your presence known? God, will you make your presence known? Because God, where your presence is, there is liberty. There is freedom, oh God. God, I pray that you will reveal yourself, God, in a way that when your presence is felt, that every burden, every care, every worry is lifted. Because God, we can't be in your presence and not be free. God, you lift the cares off of us because your presence is liberating God make yourself known right now God even in the pain in the midst of the tears God let them feel your presence God give them exactly what they need to know that you're right there that you would never leave them that you have not forsaken them and that even when family and friends leave that you are there to take them up in your loving and powerful arms make it real to them God that they don't have to look far because you're right there and we thank you now for the deliverance, the healing, the peace, the joy that is flowing and will flood their hearts and minds, knowing that you're there. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Where is God? He's right there. He's with you as he's with us. He's right there. And I thank you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Even now, I feel his presence. Just because I come on here and I teach and I tell you what God has doesn't mean that sometimes I too am not burdened. I too don't have pains. I too struggle. But just knowing that he's there makes all the difference. And I thank you for allowing me to come into wherever you are in your car, in your kitchen, in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you are, to share with you and to encourage you that God is there. And he's not going to leave you. And he's not going to forsake you. All right. I love you guys. Are there any questions? Anything that I can say do anything all right I pray that this uh, message has uh, blessed you this study has helped you and I, I encourage you to go back through the other lessons sometimes we need reminders 
we need reminders. And some of us have a lot of questions. And even when he didn't told us before, we sometimes get spiritual amnesia and forget. Remind yourself through his word. Okay, the why, the when, the where. And on next week, we're going to deal with the what. The what. Okay. All right, I love you all. God bless you. Please stay tuned and continue to be patient with us. I'm getting those Black History facts up as, <laughs> as soon as I, look. We're up to date. I didn't do I didn't do the one for today. I didn't do the one for today, but I encourage you. I did look. I learned something new the other day. I did not know that a black man created ranch dressing. I used to love ranch dressing. It didn't love me back because of the eggs, but I love ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. Go on our Facebook page and find out some black history facts you may or may not have known. All right. Should God say the same? We will be right back here next week talking about Knowledge is Power series. And we're going to deal with the what. Okay. All right. Good night. I love you all. Take it easy.